Mr. Abdrashid, okay. Mr. Abdrashid, have you shared your thoughts? I can see the hand of uh, Mr. Remilawal. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, we thank you for all your deliberation since. Uh, I am a member of the NOSFAT, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the zone one of your state, we have a counseling committee do throughout the whole uh, branches. Mm -hmm. And uh, this counseling committee uh, for disputes, especially in marriages, mm -hmm. even individual uh, conflict. For example, somebody who has just been released from the prison, you know there will be conflict within his mind how to settle, mm -hmm. how to resettle about his life. Mm -hmm. We pick it up, we manage it to the extent of setting him up. Mm -hmm. So, and most of the conflict within marriages we resolve mm -hmm. without going to court. Mm -hmm. and, and even within members in the UA, uh, in the NOSFAT committee, we mm -hmm. do resolve. Mm -hmm without yes. going to the court, the court. That, that, just that. using Islamic and cultural. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Uh, does anybody want to share any other thoughts? Oh, OK. Um, you see, uh, I don't know what Mr. Abdurashid shared, but from what uh, Mr. Lawal said, many times the counseling committee is uh, the unit that we automatically give the responsibility of managing conflict. Many times they do, I mean, wonderful job, wonderful job, wonderful job. And the most, most kind of dispute that come to them is family dispute. The only thing there is members are usually expected to learn on the job. Definitely, people that are selected are usually experienced people, people who are respectable in the community, in the in the organization, and we expect that. They will know how to resolve conflict. Uh, it works sometimes, many times it doesn't. But when they are now trained, especially in conflict, they will do a better job. Okay, so let's uh, let's continue with um, with our slideshow. Um, so, it's important that we move from negative peace to positive peace. And one of the ways to do it is what we just discussed, to have mechanisms in place that manage conflict, efficient ones, just like uh, NASFAT Zone 1 in you know, your state. Uh, huh? But now to not train them, especially in conflict management, will be a, a step in, uh, in the right direction. Okay. Peace could be a spiritual reality. That is another dimension of peace. Peace as a spiritual reality. Uh, as a spiritual reality, it refers to supernatural condition that compels any or a combination of the three dimension of peace we have talked about. It compels it to actualize in a given physical situation that we desire. In other words, some of us will have to pray for our mind to calm down. Some of us will have to pray for conflicts between some other individuals to stop. Parents have had to pray and fast 
to restore peace between their children or between their child and their spouse. Some people have had to pray to enforce peace, to make this happen in their community, in their neighborhood. Especially Africans, we pray a lot. And when God answers this prayer, we will see the manifestation of peace in a situation that has been violent before. You see, sometimes we didn't talk to these people, to the parties in the country, we didn't call them together and advise them. We just prayed and something happened. This kind of peace is brought about when individuals uh, involve themselves in spirit. Wow, I've been muted. Hello, everyone. Oh, oh so, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was muted. Can we all hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, okay. Thank you. I can also hear you from here. Oh, thank you, sir and ma'am, for that. I didn't know I was muted before. I didn't know I was muted. Okay. So I was saying that um, peace can be a spiritual reality. That parents have had to pray into the situation of their children, husbands, wives, I've had to pray uh, for peace to happen in some situations. Some people have had to pray for their community. Some people have had to pray for their friends that have conflict. And without calling these friends together, without mediating the conflict, and we see peace 
restored gradually. And I now cited the example of the Liberian War, the Liberian Civil War. Uh, a significant progress toward peace was made when the Liberian women, they gathered together, irrespective of their religion or whatever, they came together and fasted and prayed. That was when the warlords now agreed to meet and talk. And that was the beginning of permanent peace in Liberia. So peace could be a spiritual reality that we bring to bear, that we enforce in a physical situation. Through prayer, fasting, sacrifices to supernatural forces, we can bring this spiritual dimension of peace to a given situation. We can pray and do all sorts of spirituality for somebody to have the peace of mind. For there to be peace in a relationship. So this is the fourth dimension of peace. Now we want to quickly look at this activity. Uh, the Holy Quran and the Adit, they have instances of these four dimension of peace. The prophet is close associates. They have said things. They have acted in ways I was saying that the prophets, his associates, the Holy Quran, the Adits, they have mentioned these kinds, all these dimensions of peace. So I want us to identify in these sayings, in these scriptures, in history, different uh, I really don't uh, uh, it's like the, the, this internet is come out for me today is like with every blow of the wind, uh, the thing just trips up. But just bear with us, please. Now, this, this is the this is what I ask us to do. Let's take let's take down this thing, uh, and then at some point during the during the training, I will want us to share our 